Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Japanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. We are back in the shop today, but I have to warn you, a lot of people have asked why I don't make more videos here, and one of the main reasons is it's hot. And I have a air conditioning unit that blows right next to my workbench, and if I don't have it on, it is very hot in here, and also the cars driving by make a lot of noise, so I don't want you to have to listen to that the whole video, so that's one of the reasons I don't film in here that often, but it's after hours, I got the air going, so hopefully you can hear me, but we'll see how it goes. Also, I've been forgetting to say it in my videos, but if you can, please subscribe and like this video. It'll make it shown to more people, which would be awesome, and hopefully save others time, money, and frustration in the future. Also, do not forget to comment. Ask me a question. I love to read through the questions, and we'll get back to as many people as possible. And also, do not stop watching this video. Watch it all the way to the end, because I have a surprise for you about something that's coming up in the near future, and you're going to be interested in it. Now I had a customer come in today and I thought this would be a really good video to show you guys because it's sort of bouncing off my last video about sprockets and clutches. And uh, people are still calling thinking we're open. <laughs> All right, so that's another reason that I don't film while I'm at work because I do have to answer the phone and help customers while I'm here. So I had a lot of comments on there like, why am I even showing people how to change out a clutch or a sprocket? Does that ever break? And actually, if you use your chainsaw quite often, it does. The springs inside of the clutch, they'll blow out and it'll make it to where it's constantly engaged and it's making your chain spin all the time. If you find that's an issue, that's one thing to check. Also, the clutches, if you use it a lot and you're ripping through stuff, it's going to eventually wear a, a rivet all the way through that, those uh, spurs on that sprocket so you're gonna have to replace it now this customer he put the wrong bar and chain now the 440s they come the Husqvarna 440s come with 325 pitch chain bar and sprocket which means all three of those things have to be the same pitch so on his saw he decided to put a 3 8 full chain and bar on his 325 pitch sprocket now because of that you can see there is a line that was worn out all the way through the teeth on that sprocket because it was grabbing and ripping and not riding correctly on those teeth also you can tell from the chain that he was running on his saw a brand new chain will have these perfect little pointed edges on the bottoms of each drivers when you're running the wrong chain on a sprocket it'll eat off the ends of all of those drivers. Another way you can check is you can put his existing chain on this sprocket and as you run it around you can tell it starts jumping off those tees. So we're gonna just run it and you can feel it and hear the clicking of it not lining up in those uh, teeth. But if you put the correct chain on there, See, it runs really smooth. So we know that he had the wrong chain running on his saw. Now, there's two ways we can go about this. We know that he needs a new sprocket, and ideally we would love to find a 3-8 sprocket to go with his 3-8 bar and his 3-8 chain. But unfortunately, when we look it up in Oregon, it has a list of all of the different kinds of uh, things that you can put on this saw, and a 3-8 sprocket is not one of them. Now, we can go through some hunting and searching, and we've done it before and figured out which one it is, but it's gonna be tasking. I mean, ideally, it's something that I would just wanna go back with a 325 pitch sprocket, a 325 chain, a 325 bar, but that's gonna cost 100 bucks. And so, I mean, we're gonna have to do some investigating to see if we can find that 3.8 sprocket, but it's not looking likely. Now, I see this mostly happen when somebody has a saw given to them and they don't know anything about it, or it's come in pieces, or they get a an engine without a bar and chain and they just go into their garage and grab one that they think is gonna work. And, and this is what happens if you're not sure about which chain and bar go on that sprocket. So I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to find out before you go buy a chain or a bar and uh, make sure that you don't uh, have this problem in the future and hopefully it'll save you some time, money, and frustration. 
All right, so I know a ton of you been asking for a shop tour and I promise you, as soon as we get this place cleaned up, I'm going to do it. But we had an extremely busy summer and it's still going pretty strong. So we have not had the chance to clean because to tell you the truth, we much rather be fixing things and making that money right now and then clean everything up all winter. But I decided today I'm going to let you in on the chain room. This is where all the magic happens, where we sharpen chains every single day, where we pop the rivets out, where we re-rivet it, where we keep all of our 100 foot rolls of chains so we can make any chain to fit any chainsaw. Now there's four different 100 foot rolls that I keep in stock and keep backups of just to make sure that I have enough, but we um, go through 3 8 low, 3 8 full, and two different size 325s because there's 325 with 63 gauge and 325 with 50 gauge. Now these fit the majority of all chainsaws. And uh, I will tell you the difference on the 325s. And then also there is some more chains in the front that we keep that we do not cut because they're just too dang small. Now we do keep lots of cut loops. The only ones that we do keep in the cut loops though is the 3 8 low 43 gauge. Now steel puts this chain on a lot of their smaller saws like the MS 180, the 170s and stuff like that. Um, there's some electric, uh, saws that, that take this chain and then when you're talking about gauge what you're talking about is how thin this driver is right here the width of it so it's it's really easy to bend when you're trying to cut it or or take the rivets out and so we've just decided it's easier to keep as you know pre-cut loops and that's the way we've gone on those ones and then steel decided they used to have this pico mini chain on some stuff years and years ago but they brought it back and it's a little irritating but this look at this chain it's tiny and they're putting it on all of the pole saws that they're coming out with now so that's another thing i'm selling a ton of these chains because there's just not much tooth there and also they're expensive i mean us we we you know aren't a steel dealer so i get these from the steel shop that is what the steel shop you know charges 29.30 for a 14 inch chain, which all the chains at our shop that we cut, the, that would be $17.95. But no, Steel decided to come out with this one and we just have to eat it. So my shop sort of has an edge because we're one of the last shops that actually keep 100 foot rolls so we can make sure to cut you any size that you need. Most stores, they just go ahead and buy the pre-cut loops, which makes them have to keep a lot more in stock. But also with me buying 100 foot rolls and cutting them to whatever size you need, I'm able to sell at at least $2 below every other shop in town and all the big box stores, Lowe's, Sutherland's, Home Depot. So I got an edge on that one. All right, so I grabbed a few bars here, um, just miscellaneous ones off my shelf here that we can show you exactly the information that you're gonna need. Now, me cutting them, I much prefer when you bring a chain in, that way I can count the drivers, know what gauge, know what size it is, and cut you the exact right chain. But if you don't wanna do that, and it's pretty smart, if you if you know you're gonna be buying chains all, all the time, Go ahead and take a picture because it's got usually the information right here like this. This is a 20 inch steel bar and it has 3 eighths full, 72 drivers. And then I know you probably can't see it, but it says 50 gauge there somewhere. Like on this echo bar here, it's a 14 inch bar. I can tell from that that it takes 52 drivers, that it's 3 eighths low profile because there is two different profiles of 3 eighths. There's 3 eighths full and 3 eighths low. On this one, it doesn't give you, this is a an old Craftsman, which is a Poulin bar, and it doesn't give as much information, but from this I can tell that it's 16 inch bar, that it's 3 8 low, and I know, do you know, how, what size it needs to be just from that, but you have to have some kind of information so we know exactly which chain you need. Now, I didn't pull out a 325 pitch, but I'm going to show you the differences in the chains themselves. Now, other than the very much smaller chains that I just showed you a second ago that they're putting on the uh, steel electric chainsaws and the pole saws and some of their smaller saws, um, these are the three main sizes that I sell, which is 3 8 full, 325, and 3 8 low. Now, it all you know comes back to you. The more you spend, the more bang you get for your buck. If you buy a bigger saw, you're going to be able to run bigger chain, which does have a bigger tooth, which is going to cut faster, period. So most of the smaller saws come with a 3 8 low, medium-sized saws, 325, and big bad boys, 3 8 full. 
All right, so last but not least, let's cut a chain, show you exactly how I do it and how long it takes for me to make sure I get the right chain cut for every chainsaw. All right, so since the most common chain that I sell is for 20 inch and it goes on probably the Steels or the Husqvarna's, um, is 72 drivers, 3 8 full. So I pulled out my box of 3 8 full chain here and I have these two little nails here where I'm going to put the end of the chain. And then we have this diagram here that shows either whether it's 3 8 or 325. Now we don't deal really with the 404 pitch chain. Um, we just don't see it that often or we, and we also don't do the quarter pitch. So my, my little thing here is completely messed up from all the chain wreckage it's seen throughout the year, but I'm going to lay the chain on this one right here and we're going to see exactly how many drivers it is, just so we don't have to count it out. This is a way to do it a little quicker. So let's pull it out and get to 72 drivers. All right, so I'm going to take the end of my chain. I'm going to put on my little 3 8 spot now here. I'm just going to roll this up. I can tell from my diagram that 72 drivers is right there, so I'm going to grab the one right after it. I'm going to pull it over here to my punch. All right, so then I'm going to grab this little tool, and what it does, it keeps the chain in place as you're uh, popping the rivets out. So, let me go just get rid of that old one. Set it right in there. And I'm going to come down right in the center of that rivet. And we've broke the chain. To reattach the chain together, I have a new link that I'm going to rivet in there. This is where the chain will go and this spins around as it tightens right here. Just like that. So I got my chain, I'm grabbing one end, just putting it in there. Grabbing the other end, and I'll put the front piece on. Make sure everything's seated correctly. I grab it from the center, hang these and these two little slots on each side, line it up, tighten it down a little bit, and go to spinning. Twisting just a little bit to tighten. And then we'll do the other one. got the perfect rivet every time. Oh yeah, I got a secret to tell you, don't I? I wanted to let y'all know this Sunday, you are not gonna wanna miss the live stream because I have a special guest and we are doing a little kind of interview. I'm gonna be able to ask questions to the legend, Mower Medic. I'm gonna find out all them dirty little secrets uh, you know, that I even might not know about on the, all these kinds of pieces of equipment. So. Bring your questions and join us this Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and uh, hopefully we're gonna have some fun. So thanks again for tuning back into Chicanic. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us yet on Instagram, find me at The Real Chicanic. Also, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash chicanic. Thanks, and have a great day.